All right, welcome back. Uh, so we are going to talk about the color sensor. Uh, so the color sensor uh, has a couple different things it can do. Uh, you can kind of see here in this uh, UML diagram uh, that we're going to make an object called color sensor. Uh, color sensor has a bunch of instance variables and no methods, uh, which is pretty easy to use. I put the ones in black, uh, reflected light intensity and color that we're going to use. Uh, and then I put some of the ones in gray that we're not actually going to use. So we'll talk about the ones we're not going to use, but we won't like spend a lot of time on them. Uh, so we've got a couple examples in here uh, that we're going to do. So there's kind of two modules for the sensor. Uh, one is called drive to color. I think I've already got it up in this tab. Uh, and we'll just play this video really quickly, uh, and then we'll just kind of explain uh, what it does. All right, there it goes. Um, so you can see that uh, I pressed a button on it, um, and uh, it drove to that color, and then I pressed a different color. So it said seeking blue, so it's going to drive until the, the sensor is over blue. Seeking black is what it said there, and so it found black. Um, and so it's just basically driving down this line uh, until it finds the color that it's looking for. Uh, by the way, this uh, poster we've got uh, printed out for you, and you'll get your team's poster. Uh, but that's, uh, that's trying to find a color, uh, and so that's actually using this to determine what color it's over. The other one is line following. So this is the one that I kind of like the best, so I'll show this video. All right, so get it started here. Uh, so you can see that uh, you put it on the, on the track. In your module, you'll actually teach it what, what white and black are, uh, and then you'll have a button to make it start following the line. How it follows the line is up to you. I've kind of intentionally not worried about mine. Just as long as mine works, I was happy, right? Uh, but you can see kind of that little red light. It kind of goes over the black line, uh, and then it changes how it's driving. So mine, it either goes straight or it turns right. Um, you could definitely make it smoother uh, than what I did. And then the program stops by pressing the touch sensor. Uh, so you can see the color sensor there, uh, and you can see that it starts on white, and then it does its thing. So those are the two uh, modules uh, that you've got. So drive to color and line follow, uh, and you're going to be using the color sensor uh, to implement that. And so the color sensor, here's just kind of an example. Uh, you make a color sensor. Uh, it's kind of nice in that it kind of works like the touch sensor in that you don't have to tell it where it's at. It'll just find it, uh, and assuming it finds one uh, and you don't have multiple, you don't have to pass in any parameters. Once you've created the color sensor, uh, you really should do uh, a check to make sure that it's there. So you should have like a cert color sensor, which I'll show in a later slide. Um, but then you, to get values from it, you just use the instance variables. So if you wanted to get how much light uh, is reflected back for line following, uh, that's just dot reflected light intensity. And that number is a percentage. Uh, so it's like how much got reflected back if 100% got reflected back, that's white, right? So 100% got reflected back. Um, if zero got reflected black, it's, it's black. Now, really, you don't get hundreds and zeros. You get like, uh, maybe you'll get like a five for a black or something pretty low. You might get like a 90 for white, uh, like pretty bright, um, or somewhere in between. Ambient light, we are not going to use, but I thought I'd tell you about it. So ambient light, so if the sensor were mounted differently, like let's say it was just pointing up at the room, um, you could just see how much ambient light there was in the room. We are not really going to use that because we're not pointing up. But maybe for your project, you'll do something where you would use it. Um, it's also a percentage of how much light is there. The next three, red, green, and blue, um, what they do is, I, I left them in here just because the way the sensor really works is it, it shines red, um, and then it sees how much light comes back. And the value that comes back is actually a 10-bit analog reading. I'm um, in a 10-bit analog reading. Uh, it goes from 0 to 1,023. To th and so what it does is it shines red, the LED red, um, and it says, hey, how much got reflected with red? And then it shines green, uh, and it says, hey, how much got reflected with green? And then it shines blue, and it says, hey, how much got reflected with blue? And by the way, it does that fast. Like, it can go through all three colors, you know, hundreds of times in a second maybe even, right? And it takes those and it figures up, hey, what color was this thing most likely? Um, you know, what's my best guess at the color based on how much got reflected for red, green, and blue? And it's kind of neat that you can do that. And it gives you a dot color uh, response. And that dot color response, uh, we'll see it here, it can have the values uh, 0 through 7. 
So this sensor can find if there's um, no color under it. So like if it's pointing up in the air, there's no color under it. Um, if it's on black, blue, green, yellow, uh, red, white, or brown. Some colors work better than others. Uh, I found that black and white are great. Uh, red is also pretty good, uh, but like yellow is kind of a disaster, right? And brown, brown, yellow, and they don't work as well. But red, uh, blue works pretty well, black, um, and does those things really well. You can see in my silly little example here, as I'm just kind of showing, you know, one way you might use it. So color, uh, sensor dot color, it's just an integer. It's the integer zero through seven, right? That's all it is, it's pretty easy to use. If you wanna compare it uh, to the number, um, like, so this is red, this is five. If you wanted to say current color equals equals five, that would totally work, uh, but it's not considered best programming practice to have magic numbers like that. So they put these constants in the code. So it's ev3.colorsensor.redcolor, and that is literally just five. Um, but it makes your code more readable to say this than just say equals five. Um, so what I've got here is if it's over red, it would say like like verbally, uh, I see red. If it's uh, not red, if it's some other color, uh, it would print uh, what color it is. And you can see here, I'm just showing another way that you could use that integer. Uh, so it takes all the color names, puts them in a list, um, and then it prints I see, uh, and then whatever the color is. And obviously it wouldn't actually print red because if it was red, it would have got it picked off earlier in the loop. Uh, but this is just example code. It's an integer. You can use integers. Uh, so that's the color property. The other one that we're going to use uh, is the reflected light intensity. So reflected light intensity, this is the one that's a percentage of how much light it sees. Uh, and so in this example, uh, it's just printing, right? So it's just taking that reflected light intensity. Um, and so if you're running this, it'd, it'd do one printout a second so you could like put it over black and then you can put it over white and you'd see different values that came up. Uh, and so that's really <laughs> that's really kind of it, which is kind of nice. Uh, so we've got color uh, and we've got reflected light intensity. They're both integers. Um, and if you know how to use those, you know how to use the color sensor. Uh, I'm gonna go back really quick and show the, the UML. And there are these others as well, but really we just use those two uh, that, are, that are just integers. One thing I wanna mention uh, with, this, uh, with this color sensor is that whenever you use it in the modules, what I eventually want you to do is I want you to put it into your Snatcher 3 class. So eventually your robot, um, I mean, he's in charge of everything, right? Your library. Um, and so inside your constructor, um, you should have self dot um, all the different things that this robot's got, right? So in your earlier stuff, you should have like a self dot left motor, a self dot right motor, uh, self dot like arm motor. Um, you should also put all the sensors in here too. So you should have self dot touch sensor, um, and then eventually you'll do the pixie uh, and the color sensor. So that's the one we're doing this time. So definitely. Um, when you're in class, like when you're doing these things, put all these things into your Snatcher class. Um, and if they're in your class, uh, one nice thing is, is you can use them, like you can just say robot.touchSensor, um, or you could like, you know, use them with a method, right? So uh, it's kind of nice to do things that way. And also we recommend that after you make them, go ahead and do an assert for them. And what this assert does is that if something comes unplugged, like this guy's just unplugged and there just is no touch sensor, your program will crash right away. And you actually want that, right? Like if, if there's a problem and it doesn't find the touch sensor or something like that, uh, crash the program. So right now you know about touch sensor, you know about color sensor, uh, and we will teach you about the Pixie uh, and the IR sensor uh, in the coming videos. All right, you're now an expert on the color sensor. You can use those, uh, use that API in the modules. Uh, come back next time, we'll teach you about uh, the IR sensor. See you then, bye. Mm -hmm.